Hi, this is Jacob. And that's Melissa. We are Unicorn Forest Games. This is our tiny studio in South Oakland. And we're going to talk to you about our latest project, Head of the Order. Head of the Order is a title that Melissa and I have been wanting to make for a long time. And we're getting very excited that with advances in sensing hardware like the Intel Perceptual Computing Platform, it's starting to become a reality. And we've made a tech demo that shows that at least this sort of gameplay style that we're hoping to achieve is possible. And that's what you're looking at. So at a base level, in Head of the Order, you get to play as a wizard, or a variety of wizards, but in this tech demo, there's only one. And from there, you get to cast spells at an opponent. And it's set up sort of like a classic fighting game, where there's health bars at the top, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And to cast these spells, you draw gestures with your hands. Um, you actually draw glyphs out into the air, and each glyph represents a particular spell. So for instance, drawing an F creates a fireball, drawing a circle creates a shield. But there's a lot more to the gesture interaction than just that. Once you create a fireball, you can flip your hand toward the ceiling and hold it in your palm. You can pass it from hand to hand. Uh, once you throw your palm towards the opponent, that's when the fireball actually launches. And beyond that, the gesture interaction gets even deeper. If you make two fireballs, you can smash them together and make a, a ball of lava. You can then grow the ball of lava by pulling your hands apart and cast it at the opponent by pushing palms towards him. And lava does more damage since it takes a sequence of gestural interactions to make it happen or to conjure it. So, and it's, it's not the only spell like that, but sort of part of the skill in this game is trying to find the balance between the spells that you can do quickly, like the fireball and the shield, and the spells that do more damage or protect you better, but take longer actions to achieve, like the lava blast or the barrier spell. So since it is so skill-based, there is a bit of a learning curve, and you will need to practice a bit before you're able to conjure spells reliably. But we think the interactions you'll be able to achieve after practicing will be much more fulfilling than, say, if we had just loosely mapped uh, gestures to individual events or just tried to make another shooter with uh, gestures as the mouse. So if you're new to the game, you will want to spend some time in the spellbook section. In there, you'll be able to read a spellbook full of all the spells available to you, as well as at any time you can press space and go over to a target practice section and just practice without the fear of uh, an opponent against you. One thing you want to make sure that you get right is the actual drawing of the glyphs. This happens in three stages. You have to point your finger, then draw the particular shape you're looking to draw, then open your hand. And only the motion in between pointing your finger and opening your hand is what's going to be analyzed. Beyond that, just practice makes perfect. We did sort of make this learning curve such that players uh, that are just starting out would be able to see players who are very good at it and say, oh wow, I want to be able to conjure spells like that. But once you're able to land some of the longer spells, it does feel really good and it does feel sort of like you are able to do magic and that's the feeling that we are really after because while we do think that gestures are the future, we're a little tired of everyone's sci-fi approach to it, and we hope that in three or five years, when I am waving my hand to control an appliance in my house, it feels much more like a scene from Harry Potter than Iron Man or Minority Report. That's the future we would like to see. That's our demo. Thanks for checking it out. You can find more details at headoftheorder.com.